Hi friends, welcome back to Edupedia Word. In today's lecture, we will see how force can cause rotation, the rotational effect of force. We will see what linear and rotational motion is. Then we will see what torque is and understand how it affects the rotation of body and we'll see the units of torque. Let us begin with a short discussion about translational and rotational motion. If we have a body which is at rest and uh, we apply force on it then and body is free to move then the body will start moving in the direction of the applied force in a straight path so it will move in the direction of the force in this straight line and this kind of motion is termed as translational translational motion or a linear motion now suppose a different scenario in which instead of a freely moving box we have a something like this we have let's say a rod which is pinned at this end So the body is not free to move. It is pinned at this end and this body therefore can only move in a circular path. That is it will have a rotation. Now imagine that we apply a similar force to this over here. Initially there was no motion in this scenario too. But once we apply the force, then instead of the linear motion that was caused by force in the first case, here the body will start to trace circular path. So, in this case, the force leads to rotational motion. Therefore, we can clearly see the difference between the origin of translational motion and rotational motion as a result of the same force. Now that we have brushed upon the linear motion and the rotational motion, I would like to discuss about the turning effect caused by force. Let's call it the moment of force or the torque. T O R Q U E. The turning effect that a force causes is quantitatively defined by the moment of force or the torque. Let us go back to our previous example over here. In this example, we can see that there are two things that will determine how effective the force is in rotating the body. One is quite prominent, that is the magnitude of force that we apply. Larger the force we apply, more will be the turning effect caused by the force. But suppose we apply a very large force or certain force exactly at the axis, at the pinning point, then will that be able to turn the body? No. 
that won't cause any rotation. So we see that if the force applied passes through the axis, it will not cause rotation. Therefore, a second factor which also determines how effective the force will be in rotating the body is the distance of the force from the axis. So how further away from the pinning point is the force applied? Is it applied here? Is it applied here? Is it applied here? So the two factors that will affect the rotation is the first is magnitude of force and second is distance what distance the distance of line of action of force from center of rotation or from the pivot point from pivot and this combined factors the first factor that is the magnitude of force and the second factor the distance of line of action of force from pivot the combined effect is taken into account in what we call as the torque or the moment of force so the definition of torque is that torque is equal to the product of product of force applied that is the magnitude magnitude of force and the perpendicular distance and the perpendicular perpendicular distance of line of action of force from the pivot the pivot can also be called as the axis of rotation so the torque is the product of the two factors which determine how effective the rotation will be caused by the force so ultimately torque is the determining factor now let us see a little more into the definition it says that it is the product of force the magnitude of force and the perpendicular distance of line of action of force from the pivot what does the second part mean I will help demonstrate the second part help you understand it with another example an extension of this example in this example the line of action of force is this line that is the direction in which force is applied and the perpendicular distance of the line of action force from the axis of rotation that is this point is this particular distance now let us take another example that is an extension of this example in which what we are doing is that we are basically changing the direction of application of force now we are applying the force in this direction so what is the line of action of force in this case it is this direction 
as is quite evident from this example that the line of action of force and the point is not perpendicular at this point not perpendicular at the point of application of the force rather it's perpendicular somewhere over here so how does that work we will draw the line some somewhere like this where it will make a perpendicular here and the perpendicular distance then will be this distance rather than this distance though the application point is more or less at the similar point but since the line of action is completely different we need to find the point where it makes perpendicular with this line and then we take that this, this distance now let us take another example a further extension that is kind of the extreme example the same body but now the force is applied in this way that is the line of action of force in this example actually passes through the axis of rotation in this case since the line of action of force is passing through the axis of rotation the perpendicular distance turns out to be zero therefore the torque or the moment of force if the force is applied in this direction will be zero now we have seen three different examples here where the same force let's call this F this also the same force F and this is also the same force F the same force as in the magnitude is same but the direction of application is different leads to completely different values of torque since the perpendicular distance changes. In our previous example of the rod which is pivoted over here, we applied the force from this direction. As a result, the body would have rotated in a clockwise direction. clockwise but what if the force was from the opposite direction like this in this example the force is from this direction so this will cause the body to rotate in this that is the anti-clockwise direction so we see that the two scenarios are different so they are direction dependent phenomena therefore the moment of force is a vector quantity because it has a magnitude the uh, magnitude of force into the perpendicular distance and now we see that it has a direction either clockwise or anti-clockwise so torque is a vector quantity by convention clockwise torque the clockwise direction movement uh, or the clockwise torque is negative torque that is the convention that is used and the anti-clockwise is positive therefore we will use this convention whenever need be now let us see the units of torque let me write torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance we know this is the mathematical definition of torque. Now we know that uh, force 
in SI unit is uh, Newton and distance in SI unit is meter. So the SI unit of torque is Newton into meter that is Newton meter and the CGS unit is dyne for new force and centimeter for distance. Let us try to convert see the equivalence between the SI and the CGS unit. One Newton meter can be said to be one Newton is ten to the power five ten to the power five dyne as we have seen in our previous lecture. Dyne and one meter is 100 centimeter that is 10 to the power 2 centimeter that makes it 10 to the power 7 dyne centimeter so the SI unit is 10 to the power 7 times the CGS unit in today's lecture we read about rotational and translational motion we saw what torque is, what the factors, what are the factors that determine torque, and we saw the units of torque. In our next lecture, we will read about couple and uh, about equilibrium. Till our next lecture, have a great day. Goodbye.